What's up, YouTube? This is Dave Matic One uh, with a, another video. Uh, before I get started, I just want to say uh, thanks to everybody for tuning in and subscribing. Up to 25 subscribers, I'm really happy. Um, I'm glad that you're finding my content interesting and hopefully helpful and informative. Um, today, I wanted to go over a couple knives, but the thing is, is these two knives that I have have been reviewed over and over again. Six million. Uh, reviews, view, or reviews, um, opinions on these knives or whatnot. Uh, but I really wanted to put my two cents in on it, so I wanted to kind of change it up on how I was going to review these guys. Um, uh, first up, these, these guys, I would have to say, um, are probably uh, the most EDC knives um, that I've seen so far on YouTube. I mean, people go one way or the other with these things, uh, with these two knives. Um, and it really has to do with personal preference, um, and uh, uh, but they're uh, they're both really good knives, um, and they've been reviewed quite a bit. So what I was going to do is I was going to do another comparison video between the two, uh, because these are these two are common so commonly uh, EDC'd, and they're very comparable to each other. So let me go ahead and get started. The two um, the two knives I'm going to go ahead and uh, 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 kind of review or put or my put in my two cents on today are uh, the Kershaw uh, the Kershaw Skyline and the ever so pop popular uh, Spyderco Tenacious. Um, let's start with the Skyline first. Uh, the Skyline, uh, the blade length on the Skyline is three and an eighth. Uh, the overall length is uh, seven and three eighths. The weight of this guy is 2.3 ounces. It's very, 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 very light. Uh, part of the reason for it is it's only have it only has one liner, which is the actual uh, liner lock, and the other side is just G10, uh, which makes for a very light, very light setup there. Um, let me see here. The blade steel on this guy is 14C28N stainless, and it is a stone wash slash. Uh, bead blast uh, finish on that. The grind on this, I believe, is a it's a hollow ground with a secondary uh, secondary uh, bevel at the end, uh, and very sharp out the box for sure. Definitely, very 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 sharp. Um, let me see. The handles are G10, and they are pretty grippy. And uh, it is a flipper, as you can see, with a with a thumb stud. And uh, you have pocket clip here is only right hand carry up or down, tip up, tip down. All right. Now as far as uh, the Spyderco goes, Spyderco Tenacious, we're looking at the blade length at three and three eighths, a little bit bigger. Overall length is seven and three quarter, uh, seven and three quarters, just about five eighths bigger than the um, than the Skyline. The weight is four ounces. It's heavier. Um, these liners, uh, they are. Uh, they are skeletonized uh, to lighten up on the weight, and it's not that heavy. Uh, four ounces for an EDC is not bad. It's probably right around your average there um, until you get into titaniums, of course, which are quite a bit lighter. Um, the blade steel is a HCR 13 MOV, and it has a satin finish. Um, just a, a bevel grind at the bottom with, these, with this guy. Um, we do have a pocket clip. is tip up, tip down, left and right carry. Um, very versatile uh, as far as that goes. All right. Um, basically, I'm gonna do kind of like uh, like I did with the my uh, uh, Boker Nopal versus the Cold Steel Mini Tough Light type of deal. So uh, first kind of category I came to kind of came up with is it's a fit and finish on these knives. Uh, fit and finish on a Skyline is very good. Definitely good quality. Uh, it's made in the U.S. Very 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 good quality. Um, no rough spots anywhere or milling uh, imperfections anywhere on this knife whatsoever. Um, the blade, the grind on the blade is very even all the way through. Um, very nice and very, very, very good quality. Uh, definitely worth the money for this knife. Um, with the Tenacious, the same thing. Very good, good quality. Uh, no imperfections in milling or how they ground down or sanded or finished the G10. Um, uh, pretty good all the way around. It is made in China, though. So that would definitely give Kershaw one up as far as people who prefer a U.S. made item as opposed to something overseas. Um, as far as fit and finish, though, I do have to give it to the Spyderco. 
uh, for one simple reason, um, on the f on the uh, Torx bolts or the Torx screws, I think they're actually on the Allen screws here. They are uh, countersunk, both sides left and right, makes for a lot prettier, more clean finish. On the Skyline, you have a male screw with a female on this side, like kind of looks like a nut on that. Um, these are, you could even though they are countersunk, you can feel them uh, protruding on the pivot. Where on the Spyderco, everything is flush. You can run your hand over it and you don't even feel it. Um, so I would have to give it definitely to the uh, to the Tenacious. Um, next category, I would say is ease of deployment. Uh, the Skyline, I like, I, you guys know, I love flippers. Flippers are awesome. Um, this does deploy pretty well once you figure out exactly what angle you have to be at to get that flipper to engage. When you first got it, when I first got it, I had a bunch of where it would deploy 90% of the way. And until you got used to how to flip it, um, it was, you know, uh, you know, it wasn't deploying all the way. You have to get used to it. Um, nothing to do with the smoothness of this knife because the smoothness is pretty good. It's just getting used to the angle. All flippers, you have to sit your finger a certain at a certain way until you get into the higher end stuff where they've got bearings and the pivots and all that stuff where there's just no way that you can mess up on it. Um, this does have a, uh, a uh, thumb stud on here, but this thumb, this thumb stud is a pain in the butt to even, it's almost useless to tell you the truth. I mean, I gotta put my finger like that to get the pop open. So as far as smoothness uh, goes on that, not so good. Um, but the flipper, uh, definitely. If you had this knife minus the flipper, this would be a pain in the butt to open and close. Um, Spyderco, it just has old school Spidey hole. Very easy. Easy to access, tapered, so you can access the Spidey hole no problem from underneath, from up top. So as far as ease of deployment uh, would have to go to the Spyderco. Uh, as far as appearance wise, um, I'd have to give the appearance to the Kershaw. Um, this is a very sleek design. Um, it's very, it's very, it's, you know, it's very sleek. That's all I could say. This, the reason being is a, all, a lot of Spydercos, uh, it's, their blade shapes, um, and designs, they're all the, you can tell a Spyderco from a mile away. Um, and from a mile away, you could confuse one model with the next, unless you're a Spyderco freak, and you absolutely can tell. Uh, but just for a normal, like your normal common knife owner, or even your newbie collector or whatever, uh, all the blade shapes are pretty much, they're clo they're similar to each other. Uh, there are differences. Once you get more familiar with the Spyderco line, you will be able to notice and pick them apart, no problem. Uh, but I believe that the, um, the Kershaw's, uh, they, one blade, they, they do have differences between their blades, they're not a bunch that really look like each other, although there are a couple, but you'll find that more so with the Spyderco, and that's why I gave Kershaw, um, Kershaw, uh, better, uh, would definitely rate this, as far as appearance-wise, than the Spyderco, um, uh, just for that reason. Now, they both look very cool, they are very, very cool, uh, but it, this was a hard one, it could have been a tie, you know, it all, it's, it really all boils down to personal, uh, preference on that one. Um, let me see, EDC, um, what, you know, basically, um, when I mean EDCs, are you going to feel it in your pocket, um, are, you know, what's going to be more comfortable to you, um, are you going to be, be able to access stuff in your pocket while you have that clipped into your pocket, how does it fit, how does it ride, um, this one, I, it's, it's, this one was a really tough one too, um, <clears throat> now, the Kershaw's major advantage, I would say, was how narrow this, this knife is. It, this, if, when you see people review this knife, you're going to automatically, and, and you order it, when you get it, you're going to automatically think, wow, I always thought it was bigger. Um, it is a, a, a skinnier knife, for sure. Um, it's very light, so you're not going to really notice it that much. Um, that's probably the biggest advantage the Kershaw has over the Spyderco. Uh, as far as that goes, you put this in the pot in your pocket, you're gonna forget about it. It's even there. Um, 
it does <clears throat> it does ride pretty low, probably as low as the Spyderco. Um, the only thing is, is you only have tip up, tip down carry for right handers, for righties, uh, no left hands. So that would be the only downside of that. Now the Spyderco, um, it's a little wider, so ease of access to items in your pocket are going to be a little bit more restrictive, but not much at all, not at all. I mean, this is pretty much your basic, you know. You're gonna find more knives that are little. You're gonna find knives that are narrower than this, um, but not too much wider. So I would say this will be the norm, your average. So you'll be able to get stuff in and out of your pockets, no problem. Um, but you can, uh, a left-handed person, will not be able to purchase the Skyward. They would, uh, they would get away from purchasing the sky, uh, the Skyline because, uh, because of the fact that it's only uh, tip up, tip down on the right side. So um, I'd probably, I would have to give it give this one to uh, the Skyline for sure. On my paperwork I was kind of like doing, oh well I think it's a tie but uh, I think the, sky, uh, the Skyline is you're not going to notice it uh, that much. You're going to be able, if you carry a lot of stuff in your pocket, you got a keychain, a lot of keys in there, you're going to be able to access that no problem without this getting in the way. Um, so as far as carry wise I'd probably, I would say a tie maybe leaning more to the Kershaw. So there you go. That um, as far as next is uh, as far as the blade seals go, like I said, we've got the um, the 8 CR 13 MOV uh, for the uh, tenacious here. Um, it's probably the most common used overseas steel or Chinese made steel. Um, probably comparable to the 440C. Um, where on the Kershaw, you have this 14C. Uh, 28N, and from what I understand, they harden it quite a bit, so it will take an edge really, really, really nice. It'll be very sharp. Um, I would probably, um, you're going to probably be sharpening um, uh, the Tenacious more than the, the Kershaw, I would imagine. Um, I have EDC the Tenacious more uh, than the Kershaw, so I would say. Uh, I'm really not 100% sure as far as how durable or how long this guy will hold an edge, but it is a hollow ground, so you're going to be able to slice through things a little better than uh, than, the, uh, than your uh, tenacious. Uh, but then again, if you go ahead and reprofile it and do a convex grind on that, then they're going to both work pretty much equally. Um, although the thickness of um, uh, the blade width, as you can see right here on the uh, Tenacious is a little wider than the Skyline, so this is going to be a little easier getting through stuff on top of the fact that it's hollow grind. So I would say, as far as the blade goes, uh, performance-wise, we'll probably have to go to the Kershaw. Um, let me see, as far as the price goes, um, the Tenacious is cheaper. Not by much, by about a dollar. That's about it. So, as far as getting, um, uh, as far as figuring out your first knife or whatever or something to replace your current EDC uh, if you don't ho own either of these knives and you were to choose one or the other I would probably I would recommend um, I'd recommend <coughs> the Spyderco if you don't already have a Spyderco um, if you already have a Spyderco let's say you have a Manix or something like that or whatever um, and you wanted to get a smaller EDC. It all really depends on personal preference. The Kershaw would be your choice. Uh, these guys, I probably say, run pretty darn even to to each other as far as performance wise, uh, grippiness, texture, ergonomics, and whatnot. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> the Tenacious uh, feels a lot better uh, <clears throat> as far as that goes. Excuse me. <clears throat> excuse me. I'm sorry. Uh, but the, uh, as far as how aggressive the G10 is. Uh, the Kershaw is a little bit more aggressive, not by much. I mean, it'd be very. I mean, I have to. I had to sit there and put both of them in my hands, and I could barely notice that the Kershaw was a little bit more aggressive than the um, than the Tenacious. But the Tenacious has got the curve up, uh, this curve and jumping up here, uh, where you could choke down on it. Where on the Skyline, you're pretty much relying on this toil to maintain your grip. So, all right, guys, that's pretty much my two cents on these two, and I kind of wanted to give a different kind of. Uh, uh, different take on, on a review slash evaluation on these two knives instead of your typical what you see out there to maybe inform you guys and maybe help you make a uh, or finalize a decision on which knife you were going to get um, 
but both knives are very, they're very good knives. Um, highly rated, ranked, loved, EDC all over the internet. I mean, you can't go wrong with either of these. The difference in price is a dollar either way, which is going to make your decision even tougher. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's totally up to you. I hopefully, hopefully this video will kind of give you a, will help you lean one way or another. Um, uh, you know, who knows. But anyway, uh, just another video for you guys. Uh, if you like the video, uh, you know, uh, thumb it up, whatever. Subscribe. Um, comment below, please, if I can make my videos better. You guys got any ideas, let me know. I'm always up for that. And uh, thanks again. 25 subscribers, awesome. Um, I do want to do a giveaway here sometime soon, but I don't want to go ahead and do a giveaway where I'm giving away kind of, uh, you know, I want to be able. Uh, I want it to be a giveaway where people are gonna go crap, dude. I'm gonna make a video response for this because there's some good stuff. So I want to do where um, there's gonna be a handful of prizes and whatnot and cool stuff. Uh, so before, instead of just doing a 25 sub giveaway and giving away like a knife, um, you know, I'd rather do a little bit more than that. You know, you know, if you're gonna do a video response, you probably would want something more than a knife or whatnot. And I'm not gonna be one of these guys where. Uh, you gotta have, uh, um, maybe I'll do something where it's like, okay, uh, we're gonna give away something, uh, for this prize, all you have to do is make a comment, that way if you're really lazy, like I have a tendency to be at sometimes, you can just say yes, enter me in, and you'll be entered into, uh, for this item, just because it's a, uh, just a comment, and then I'll do one with a, you know, maybe a video response, and maybe I'll do something even better with a, uh, video response question type of deal where you have to look through a couple of my videos to figure out the answer to be eligible for that but probably not because I don't think you know you guys got plenty of other things to do with plenty of other videos to watch on YouTube besides having to sit there and play where's Waldo for a question on a giveaway so but anyway guys I won't take up any more of your time we're getting into a little over 17 minutes so thank you so much for watching uh, thanks for the subscriptions um, comment below um, uh, guys don't forget uh, you know, when you do videos or whatnot, to give shout outs to other people. Um, you guys should check out GI Customs. Um, if you haven't checked out his, uh, his channel, it's just GI Customs. Uh, pretty good stuff there. I like checking in on his channel. Um, let me see here. Let me give you a couple more here. Um, sorry about that. So I always like to find new people on YouTube. Um, they may, uh, here you go. Here's another guy. His name is Pactanth. P A C T A N T H. Really cool channel. He's actually got a giveaway going on right now. See if you want to go check his channel out. Um, he's got a giveaway where all you got to do is give a comment for an entry. Um, video response gets you three entries. Uh, pretty good stuff. I just got on his channel probably about maybe three or four weeks ago. Um, and then a week later he had a giveaway, so it was pretty awesome. But anyway, he's got good content there. Uh, go check him out. Um, pretty good guy. Um, there's a bunch of, you know, uh, there's a bunch of good guys out there, so I'm just giving you, I'll try to give a shout out every video or something, that way you guys get a chance to go look around for other content and, uh, you know, when you're sitting home bored, YouTubing or whatnot. Alright guys, have a good one, thank you for watching, peace.